going to be left up here. You can't leave Vlad open. Oof, and he's going to be banned out, which means EDG do have the option of first picking Rise in the third game against RNG, and that's probably going to get locked in. No one is surprised. Rapid Star standing behind EDG as their drafting coach, whereas Fly is behind RNG on the other side. So, deja vu from game number one. The Rise has gone through Pixar Bands. And this is something else that's been noticed, is two bands of Braum have been seen from RNG. They don't do it this time. Because, mm -hmm. again, forced bands on the other s side of the rift. I wouldn't be surprised that they prioritize that so heavily. It's just curious, because they are doing that. And they give open Bard for the flip team anyway. And this is also the first time that Uzi will step out of his comfort zone in terms of the repeated Caitlyn picks. Caitlyn is available. Hmm. Instead, looking for more of that utility and picks up the Sivir. Maybe uh, trying to bait Deft into the Ash pick. I think it's just too valuable with the Karma being banned also. Having the ultimate there, empowering your team. And with MLXG still to pick a jungler and seeing what could be taken from him, I'd be shocked if he didn't go for something like the Kindred, which we are yet to see and it's very perplexing. We could possibly pick up the Graves here, clear up. Really fond of the champion. Has played it quite a few times in both spring and summer of the LPL here. It's going to be the locking of choice coming for EDG, and they also go with Nami as their support of choice again. So again, heavy disengage. Uh, clear Love gets his comfort pick. He likes to uh, priority on Graves versus other junglers, although his most played this split are Rek'Sai and Kindred, mm -hmm. not the sample size of last split, which was Graves. I like the fact that Sivir has been taken away from the Rise. Rise's big issue is that he has an inability to get into team fights. He needs the augmented movement speed. I saw them hovering Swain. I would like Swain with Sivir because he has very similar problems that Rise does that she would compensate. Yep. Without knowing what it's against, though, it feels like even just based off these hovers, they want to prioritize Looper getting a counter pick. And game number two kind of cemented the fact that they have strengths in certain areas that. EDG do not, generally speaking. That is through that top lane. Well, let's do see what they lock in here for RNG. Xiaohu is going to be picking up his victor, and Gragas is the jungler of choice. So this entire series, Kindred not getting picked or banned. Gragas is a good choice still. MLXG mm -hmm. has an early pressure jungler. Of course, the flash body slam at level 3 is quite potent. RNG, as far as team compositions are concerned, I'd still be happy with that. And it does open the floor to Looper playing the Swain once more, who has this happy medium between damage and tankiness, where the Gragas can be a full tank, and they've got a Braum to complement. Likewise, Gragas can also threaten kind of the mid-range reach of Rise. So when they try to group up in Siege, can pop him off the tower and break that Siege relatively easy, should RNG get in that position. That's what energy lock in as their next two picks here. I know Deft wants that Cogmore, but I don't think the team does. <laughs> We've seen Deft play uh, Caitlyn and Ezreal quite a lot here in the summer split of the LPL. It's going to be the Ezreal lock-in for Deft. The champion that he is very well known for and plays to great success. Deft is the best Ezreal in the world. And Spawn says it himself. He is the definition of the Ezreal tier list. He is a <laughs> god on this champion. Even if he loses here uh, and RNG take the series, it's just going to be a joy to watch Deft on Ezreal. What he does with this champion is absolutely amazing. And we see RNG get their final lock-in here of Trundle as their final pick. Wow, locking in the Trundle is an offensive option still. Of course, you can go towards your Ravenous Hydra and continue to split push. Looper is just an outright god when it comes to Trundle as well. Manages to win games that his team has no right winning. If you saw MSI, a perfect example of this. He can hard carry, finally, with this Game 3 option. Likewise, you have a lot of disengage on this composition. They reset and pick potential from Gragas and his cask. Uh, Looper's Pillar, as well as Braum and Sivir to augment the team. So, a very flexible RNG comp, very similar to what EDG ran last game. Well, let's see what they could do with this team composition. Coming into game number three here. Let's see if it's going to be another one-sided affair or if these two teams are going to go as we expect them to, you know, putting up a great fight, trading blows back and forth. But everything will be told here as we head into game number three between RG and EDG.
As we are going to head into Summoner's Rift here for game number three between EDG and RNG. The series is currently tied up one to one, and unfortunately, it seems like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties here as everybody's loading up onto Summoner's Rift. So I want to quickly look at the compositions, and this gives us a moment to do so. Um, EDG have a very kind of farm clear love comp, and what I mean by that is like Echo will be fine into Trundle. Uh, Ezreal and Nami are a very self-sufficient lane, especially against Sever and Braum, if it is a 2v2. Like, they've got the sustain, they've got the, the safety with the arcane shift as well as the mystic shot. And then Ryze is just going to sit and continuously farm himself up. So it isolates kind of like this 1v1, should Clearlove look to challenge MLXG, or he can just sit back and farm and they can win through the jungle. And that's what EDG typically do. On the other side, RNG have a lot more kill pressure, or it's more kind of like the pressure is on for them to find kills. They've got the Braum, um, Sivir's going to be push forward if she wants to abuse. Trundle needs to get ahead so he can open up a split push option for RNG should they look to that late game. So it's kind of like much more proactive for RNG to to start off on the right foot to look for these ganks and to look for the snowball where EDG can just sit back and say, let's farm it out, it's fine. Whilst I, like, I do agree with that, it's definitely something that EDG want to do. I have to question how that late game looks for EDG because remembering that it is a Graves in the jungle, they're lacking an outright tank role. Trundle's always going to keep Echo busy in a side lane and from that position, Nami is their support means they don't have a tank just outright. And that is a big question mark. It's essentially a blemish of their team composition that RNG can then exploit in a 4v4. I just think that like based off champion select and how we've actually finished these drafts, and there's more opportunities for RNG to not only win the game outright through multiple strategies, but to just completely move EDG around the map and win through the two games that we've seen so far in the exact same style. Well, let's see if that's going to happen here because like you mentioned, it's... I mean, two very one-sided affairs in this best of three series so far. And this is a game that we thought, you know, they're going to be slugging against one another and fighting back and forth and huge team fights all over the place. Just being, once he finds an advantage, they snowball on it. And like you mentioned, it's from RNG's aggression, LSU can gain number two, find that early gank, they just snowball the lead from there. EDG reacting to that aggression in game number one, able to find their leads from just doing that. That and it feels like we're going to see the same things coming into here. Are there any other matchups that really stand out here after picks and bans come out here? Because things have been shaken up again. Rise slipped through one more time. We didn't see the kindred one more time after the nerfs that hit her in six eleven. I think it just goes back to the words that you used, which were reactive. EDG won by being reactive, by being right place, right time, whereas RNG won by being proactive, by setting up that gank initially, mm -hmm. and that's what we've kind of seen from these two teams. Um, this definitely comes down to the jungle for me, uh, if game one and game two are any indication here. So all eyes are on MLXG and Clear Love to kind of step up and be, I am the best jungler in China. You know, this really shows in terms of the place. So like you mentioned, Clear Love, known for farming a lot. MLSG known for ganking quite a lot. We saw that's how a lot of the games were impacted. It's counter ganking, hmm. clear love. Yes, both of them can farm, but the, the difference is, is that MLXG is setting the pace, um, either through Mata's shot calling and just following that through. But clear love will shadow above people. He'll always be in the right place. It's not like he'll prioritize farm over ganking the lane, but he just... He'll show up for the counter gank. He'll always be in a position to help his team, but he's also prioritizing his own gold. Um, EDG win through their jungler. So what do you think of bottom lane coming into this game? Because we've seen it go both ways so far. Game one, Def was able to get a one-on-one -on -one against Uzi. Game two, Uzi and Master just shut down Def to make her. Who's the best bottom lane in the LPL, guys? Because right now, we don't really have a good way to tell from those two games, it feels. I don't think you can look at this series and say that we've, like above and beyond has found the best bottom lane in the LPL. There's always going to be speculation towards either because realistically, as Frostgrave already, al already alluded towards, the junglers are pretty much winning these yep. games. I think what we're seeing is an exploitation in the top lane since game number two from RNG as well. Middle lane is essentially null and void, but if we throw back to the first game, the rise starts to outscale the victor, and that's where your AD carry then has a bad time. And realistically, what we do is we say the best bottom lane is usually just the one that wins the game. And right now, we see RNG win, we see Uzi do well. We see EDG win, Deft is doing well. I don't think we can outright say that there is a bottom lane better than the other right now. You know, that kind of is a big deal for the two teams as well. EDG, they really want to show that they're still the best team in China. RNG, they've been very vocal about it. They want to go to Worlds. They want to win Worlds. They want to show that they're the best team in China right now. This is their biggest test. They have to try and take that energy because it's the only game they're going to play against them during this cross-conference. I mean, other than old-school team World Elite, um, Royal Club, Starhorn Royal Club, Royal Never Gives Up, whatever you want to call them, RNG now, obviously, uh, 
They are probably the most accomplished Chinese team on an international stage, two-time world finalists. Um, obviously, Team WE making their big run kind of back in mm -hmm. Season 2. Uh, EDG, the most powerful and most competent domestic team in the LPL. So it's it's amazing that we're having two histories like this clash now and the fact that they've both built themselves up to this point. Well, unfortunately, we're still having a little bit of technical difficulties here. So hopefully we'll be able to get back into the game shortly. For now, guys, what else are we going to look at? We talked extensively about bottom lane. We talked extensively about the about the junglers and what this means for these two teams. What else are we be looking at coming to game number three? Let's kind of talk about um, why I think that Deft, Mako, Uzimata, whatever combination, why I think that they are the best bottom lane in the world, one okay. of these two. It's the fact that um, when they play bottom lane, they play to win it. They don't just play to just neutralize it, to just sit back, um, to have like that, that cheeky little pocket pick where it's like, it's fine, we'll just neutralize this against you, we're gonna go even in the farm, we'll show up in the team fights and do our job. It's that they play bottom lane to dominate it. And from there, they will hard carry. And in fact, they will hard carry in a meta where every other AD carry in the world is playing utility. And yes, we're seeing utility being picked up in this series, but this is a new trend for the LPL. Typically, they take the, uh, they take the Lucian, they take the Ezreal, they take the carry and they run with it. And that's why I think Deft and Uzi are incredible right now and their partners in Mako and Mata. I'm so glad that Mako is showing up this series because mm -hmm. globally people will always talk about Mata. Mata has established himself MVP, won a world championship, has an LPL title, OG in title, he's amazing. <laughs> but Mako, is he deserves to be in that conversation. Obviously not in accomplishments, give him time, but he's shown that he can reach it given that time. Yeah, I think that like definitely need to praise Mako. I think he's a fantastic support. And Marta's basically just built himself four puppets to control perfectly, which <laughs> is what he wants. It's also what he has. Let's be honest. He's going to be comfortable with that. AD carries in particular. I agree that put them together, they definitely want to win lanes. These two teams also have the most adaptive AD carries because they're a happy medium between I can carry and I can be utility. I can still have that presence in my team, which is where both of their powers lie. I think put them together. EDG have that laning presence. They want to still win lane, but they have a team fighting utility behind them. And a lot of EDG's late games that they win is through Deft getting mar uh, mar miracle? miracle? Miracle. Miracle, yeah. I was going to say magical <laughs> and miracle, miracle in one word. The, the massive outplay. Yeah, the, the late game pentakills, essentially, the Baron fight, the things that EDG should never really have, but Deft does. That's what he provides to them, not just the laning phase, whereas mm. Uzi overpowers laning phase, overwhelms the opponents, and really just starts to run away with it in the 2v2. Their team fighting isn't as good as what Def does. And we take a look at EDG solo lanes as well. We still have Mouse and Scout in there. We didn't see Koro or Pawn uh, step up the bench for game number two or game number three. They're still going to be as the they still, still, still be the substitutes. Pawn running out of the hospital, tearing <laughs> thing off. <laughs> I gotta save EDG. No, EDG need me. No, we didn't no. see it that time. That, that that didn't come out from EDG, and we probably won't see them for some time. They might come back later on the summers with the LPL. So what do we think of Scout and Mouse here? Because you know they had a decent game in game number one, game number three now. Uh, going to game number two, a little bit like Lester. What do we expect from the solo ladies, even from RNG side of the map? I just realized from Fish Fish's expression that that joke was too old for him. It was too much of a throwback. The, oh. the pawn hospital right, joke. Right, right. <laughs> Got it's him. Okay. It's okay, Fish. <laughs> I think we can go back to as far as insect maybe in the leg breaking. Yeah, and then we'll... Pawn's already line. done it where he was <laughs> subbed in mid-series and he like ran back to EDG. They had to stall out the match and he like showed up and saved the day. Someone go get spawned in here. I, I need a little bit of help uh, hosting this. Uh, no, the, <laughs> the, question, the question was about Scout and Mouse. Um, we talked about how RNG, the, this is the clear mismatch. You've got Looper and Xiaohu. You have two brand new solo laners. You have a guy that's coming, uh, Mouse. You have mm -hmm. Mouse coming from a lane swap, or not a lane swap, a roll swap, and trying to fill that top lane identity. Um, he's technically a secondary support. Again, he's played the likes of Fizz, Trundle, Maokai. He does the same thing on all of those champions. He's now playing Echo. He's a secondary support or he's just like a big target. He's not going to be that Zatai or that Flandre of the top lane. Um, but unfortunately, RNG really haven't exploited that. I think they exploited yep. it a little bit in game two, which is why we're in this scenario. But it hasn't been like the primary centerpiece. But it's funny, because that was only really to an extent, right? At the end of the day, whilst Mouse is a facilitator, I think if EDG are winning, they still use him well. And yes, Looper was winning that lane, but if EDG were winning in the other lanes or even the jungle, he still would have done his job. He still yep. would have just been that role player. Even if he was 30 CS down, he doesn't die. And that is essentially what he does for the team. Whereas we look in the middle lane, he's 
an Azir capitulated in any champion that he plays. Rise, Azir, scale, get to 20 minutes, get two items. It doesn't matter how he gets there, how far behind he is, he will still do his job. And that's actually just what EDG needs. So I'm a big fan of how they've picked up these players and who they've picked up because of what they do. It's excellent, too, because it finally answers the age-old question of who carries where in EDG. A lot of people uh, gave so much credit and priority to the solo laners from EDG. Now they've had both solo laners replaced, and they're still just as dominant. And again, mm -hmm. if you look at like roster swaps, the fact that Koro was traded for Mouse, or technically subbed, obviously Koro's still on the bench there, whereas uh, RNG still have, or RNG upgraded to Uzi, like the... Premier AD carry and the fact that EDG are still just as dominant or still in this series, I think speaks volumes about who the backbone and who the spine of that team is. Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we're still having uh, technical difficulties here uh, for the third match between RNG and EDG. We apologize for the delay to technique. Hopefully, we'll be able to get onto some of this riff as soon as we possibly can. Guys, looking at this right now, how does this stand for Group A and Group B for EDG and RNG? They're at the top of the group. This is a crucial game to pick up. Oh no, we're going to go straight into the game right here. EDG and RNG going back onto the Rift, so it seems like those technical difficulties have been fixed. We can load onto Summoner's Rift. I mean, let's actually just answer that question anyway, because it's just as relevant whilst we get into this game. The winner between EDG and RNG secures themselves as the best team in the LPL, plain and simple. And I think it's now very important for both of them moving into the third game that they do start on the right foot. Mm -hmm. and get themselves into that number one position, not just for them, not just for their group, but for revenge. It's not just revenge in terms of the, the rematch from the finals with Zone Spring Split. Revenge for the 1-1 one -one that we're currently seeing between EDG and RNG. Both were one-sided games. I mean, just imagine how RNG feel constantly, like still being second-guessed <laughs> that they're not the best team in China. EDG slumping right now. Uh, I mean the outrage from fans just because EDG have set the bar to perfection and their s expectations so high with how well they've performed, any slight misstep. Second place is not good enough for this team. They need to be first. Their organization is billed. They're the flagship of the LPL. Mm -hmm. They cannot settle for less. And to come down to, like effectively what Rusty said, a single best of one where both games have just been so one-sided, tension, pressure is on. Well, the game has started here, so it seems like the technical difficulties have been cleared up. And there's going to be no lane swap coming to game number three. Number three here, excuse me. Green segue, but they are fighting. Death to Mako, going to try and zone out. All right, Mako. Here. There's an Ignite being put down on top, of the Na on top of the Nami. What kills me is that's the EDG special. Mako and Death do that time and time again with Braum. Whoa, there they go. Whoa, that's very aggressive. Mako is going to get stunned down. Boomerang comes back to the other side as Uzi. He's going to be able to take down Scout who flashes forward. No, Def, sorry. He's going to try to jump on top of He finds a return kill. Def picking that one up. Now we can see Martin trying to chase <laughs> him out. The They're going something. for it. We get the auto attack now. Def is Def trying to cut him. Def is going to be able to take him down. One more Mystic shot's all going to take. Gets the kill. Mata falls down. EDG trade two for one in the bottom lane. Decided Deft is the best AD carry in the world. The outplay there. The fact that Uzi uses the flash to reposition Boomerang. Rusty take it away. And he absolutely misses the reposition. Let's be <laughs> honest. The flash is forwards and everything used here from EDG. <laughs> Unfortunate. But Deft knows, somehow he knows in this 1v2 that he can actually take them on. He did. And he absolutely does. Marta hitting him actually keeps the minions aggroed, and that's what Deft is doing. So he's playing around those. Marta feels like he can't continue this because of Scout's teleport, and the sheer presence of a spectator in Rise secures him that. But they're not done fighting. Clear Love is already down in this bottom lane, straight back on top of Uzi with a nice big wave crashing on towards the turret. That's three early kills going on over towards EDG here. It seems like Scout also got picked up in the mid lane during that replay by Xiaohu. And Deft has thrown the gauntlet without any sort of juggle intervention. He has Ooh. taken control of the lane. Yes, he went back. He got a very early tier. But Uzi doesn't have any item back in response. So uh, Ezreal's still well on pace in terms of battle damage or mm -hmm. battle stats comparatively to the Sivir. Doran's Blade Boots. Just really feels like he's <laughs> neutralized the disadvantage Ezreal gets during his first back with those early pickups. I mean, it'd be good if we could see how Scout could take it now. We saw him use the teleport to get to the bottom lane and flashed immediately to try and take down the retreat. Well, he master. was just out of lane. He had no levels, nothing. Mm -hmm. He's a rise, and he was already losing lane early in this matchup the last time we saw it against Xiaohu. So, makes a lot of sense that he was going to have a bad time, and well done to Xiaohu to actually pick that one up.
with MLXG helping. Well, game number three has started on the right foot here. This is what we expected in all the games we see between these teams. I didn't expect Uzi to go down 0-2 in the first three minutes of the game. Well, I don't know. I expected fighting to take place somewhere on the map, and it has. So there's a couple of things that we actually need to recognize whilst there's no action happening for the first minute of this game. <laughs> Clearlove was ganking. He yep. actually got a gank off. He targeted the right lane as well, making sure that Uzi just got back to lane and looked for a couple extra minions and then died again for it. And that puts him in a, in a disastrous position. And this is super important because, again, they were on kind of a self-sufficient bottom lane. Clearlove could have had the range to just kind of sit back and farm, but really punishing RNG's aggression and stepping up and recognizing the junglers are dictating the pace and the flow of these games. Well, let's see how this bottom lane is going to pan out for now. Marta actually taking a lot of damage from Deft and Mako, trying to poke him as much as possible out of this lane. Still so aggressive. Yeah. And the flip side to that, of course, the point that you've raised is that MLXG still got a gank off in the middle lane, still made a proactive move and is still trading for his team. So the junglers are showing up to play in this third game of our best of three. It's still a very bloody early game between these two teams. Gold is still dead even, so it hasn't changed too much besides the fact that bot lane now heavily in favor of EDG. It's not as skewed, simply because of Ezreal's itemization. Um, it will be at one point, but uh, Uzi and Mata are, are still technically kind of in an okay position to continue to trade blows, especially because they also have control of the creep wave, something that Sivir does very well. It's very hard for uh, Nami and Ezreal to clear that out and to also then fight against Uzi and Mata because they're fighting against a much larger creep wave. And the, uh, the actual contrast point is in this middle lane, and whilst it's good for Deft, Scout teleporting actually cost him. He should have cancelled the teleport, stayed in lane, and have been better off for it. But he had to finish it. He didn't know the outcome of that 1v1 and what it was going to eventuate towards. And whilst his arise, and whilst we also spoke towards what Scout is capable of doing, and that is hit mid-game, hit his items, and still be relevant for the team, he's going to have to do a lot of work with little to no resources this time in comparison to Xiaohu, who that's actually a scary prospect to give a kill early and a giant CS advantage to an aggressive middle laner mm -hmm. on Victor. Well, let's see if Xiaohu is going to be able to continue uh, to create a CS deficit in that mid lane. There's Def weaving sneaky mystic shots there to try and hit Uzi. Clearly doing what he can to take these Raptors away <laughs> from MLSG. This body slams into the pit, finds that they're being taken by um, Clearly Love and is able to smite that one in return. Yeah, Christmas also, he gets the ward on the Raptor camp, which obviously <laughs> negates the uh, the Raptor eye, but take it. Lots of aggression in this bottom lane as well. Mm -hmm. Even considering that Uzi is 0 and 2, they know that whilst there is a tier, they're quite content with pushing this one in. Don't blame them. Here comes Scout, though. Deep pings, as well as a TP advantage now from the top laner. Yep, we already saw Trundle use his teleport to go back to base. Scout, off yeah, to they, the recall, but it. there is that teleport coming to the bottom lane. Scout and the top lane. Mouse going to try and look to find a dive here on top of them. Uzi taking so much damage to the first cigarette. Now Mako picks up that kill. They're juggling the aggro. Here's Mata. He's going to fall down. Def able to pick it up with the true shot barrage. That's two kills on over towards EDG. So beautifully communicated as well to know that Looper was going to back, that they would have that window where the TP advantage was there for the top lane and an excellent roam from Scout to set it up. MLXG <laughs> being rather aggressive there. Body slams in. Has to use the ultimate to stop them. From trying to take him down, force the flash out of the jungle as well. They are able to successfully defend the turret. Xiaohu. being took down on top of Xiaohu. Sorry, Xiaohu putting his back on top of Mako there. Forces the flash out of the Nami. But that EDG was... able to get up without losing anyone. That was all done without clear love as well. He was hard farming. Xiaohu might not be done. There's the Echo ultimate there to try and jump on top of the Victor. EDG trying to collapse on him now. Force the flash out of the Victor. And another summoner spell burnt on RNG's lineup. Cheeky maneuver to try to cue the creep wave to get the movement speed and then flash to create more space for himself. Yeah, it was a small thing to keep him alive in a situation where EDG have actually just grown massively ahead through the bottom lane, mm -hmm. but they're starting to fall behind elsewhere. The saving grace of RNG is that Trundle's now finding a lot of farm. It is Looper on Trundle, and he's starting to hit a point where with a build that wants to split push, he can do so. And this looks a lot more like the EDG versus RNG story. Lots of advantage for EDG in the bottom side of the map. However, the solo laners, RNG doing really well. Is that the story? 
A big, bo a big advantage in the bottom lane <laughs> between Deft Mako and Uzi Mata. I feel like it. That's the story now. <laughs> <laughs> Tower did fall for, <laughs> for EDG in the top side. So as Rusty was saying, uh, Looper going to continue to run away with that advantage. You can see it in the CS. 60 to 87 now has the TMA completed. So uh, a lot of wave clear available to him. And he's just going mm -hmm. to continue to be a terror up there. My story now is how do the mid laners <laughs> actually affect the game? Because there are two set advantages for both of these teams. Do they look towards lane swaps and push advantages further? Mm -hmm. I think EDG would be making a right move in getting one last nail in the coffin towards the lane of Uzi and Mata and then using that advantage and pushing elsewhere around the map. Swap towards the Trundle lane, push him out and give Mouse some time to recuperate. You can already see how those advantages are helping out RNG actually. They have a gold lead for themselves in general against EDG right now. It's not that small of a leap, 500 gold in their favor. This is with a 3-0 and 1 Ezreal in the bottom lane. So trying to creep up ahead through their advantages in these solar lanes. Deft has already gone back to base, picked up his tier and looking for the components of his Iceborne Gauntlet as well. Prioritizing the extra crowd control first over the Mana Mute. He's got a Sheen, so uh, Uzi and Mata now need to be much more respectful. Mm -hmm. Hence why MLXG is also slipping into the back here. That's what, see no what flash on Mako. They put a ward down. They just spot out the Gragas. That's going to immediately call for the retreat from the Nami. Yeah, no flash on MLXG either. So he couldn't straight up initiate. But this is the problem. Mouse taking a lot of damage up at the top side of the map. Sajigate was being put down there by Looper. So it forces the Echo out of that lane one more time. So now EDG get to choose. Do they, uh, like Rusty said, put the nail in the coffin on Uzi and Mata? Or do they try to send a lifeline to Mouse. Well, XG still being rather aggressive in this modern lane, positioning to try and stop Deft and Maker from pushing out as far as possible in this lane. And I like what MLXG is actually doing, is protecting his weak point. Mm -hmm. yep. Every other lane is doing well. If he keeps RNG's bottom lane between Uzi and Mata from no longer dying, just keep presence down here. It doesn't even necessarily need to result in kills. Then RNG are looking better for it. We already mentioned they're heading gold. So consolidate and actually look after your weak point, opposed to getting the strong lanes further ahead. He knows that they will naturally start to do that. It's a trundle after all. He, would, he doesn't need assistance. He will just get ahead. On top of that, very utility-focused bottom lane for the RNG lineup. So being slightly behind wouldn't hurt them too much. But he's on the hunt here being popped. Oh, Mako going to get jumped up. All the teleports being used down towards the bottom side of the map. This is a full-on 5-on-5 five five now that is breaking out between these two teams. Mata going to take a lot of damage from that true shot barrage on the back end. Looper is going to try and get into the fight. Good ultimate coming out from LSG. Separates him as it's going to be Scout that falls out first. Xiaohu in the back lines trying to take down Mako. Can't find Death's that final auto off. attack. There's Mouse using his ultimate to try and get back in there for EDG. Death finds a kill looking for more. They do trade that two for one. And in the end, EDG will have a uh, wave behind them, so they could look for chip damage onto this tower. RNG trying to... Ooh. They're not done yet. They're going to try and jump on top of MLXG. Depth yes. and Mouse able to find that kill there. He was looking for the power conversions as well, and that turret will fall down after a 4-5-5 five, five, five fight. And what I was going to say is that RNG looks like they're going to try to stagger their backs to uh, ward off EDG, but are immediately punished as they now rotate this into a dragon. Big objectives now gained by EDG. They break the bottom turret where they had an advantage. So pushing that further, stretching it to its absolute limit. EDG now grow a lead in their favor. And things have turned back around. And the first Ocean Dragon of the games can be taken down by EDG. The next dragon this morning will be another Ocean Dragon. And the funny thing is, Xiaohu had the right idea. He would have done a lot of damage in that fight. But the flank was not ideal. And honestly... MLXG knocked people towards him, mm -hmm. trying to disengage from the opposite end of it. So best case scenario is usually that Looper has a flank. But this time around it was Xiaohu, and he's not strong enough to blow somebody up yet. You can see MLXG was trying to protect that bottom lane. Like you mentioned earlier, Rusty, two teleports supporting the EDG lineup to stay further and further ahead. Important though, as we check over the itemization, is how far ahead Deft is. So Uzi will get his back end. We'll see what he builds. Does get the components for his Essence Reaver, but doesn't have the item completed. Whereas Def now has damage as well as utility with the completion of the Iceborne Gauntlet. Wow, noticeable differences between these teams where their strength lies. MLXG is feeling blue today. <laughs> so Xiaohu, honestly, after not getting it. 
takes that one away. We take a look at the gold differences at the moment. Small lead up in the top side for RNG and a big lead in the mid lane, about 800 gold in favor of that Victor, but a massive lead for EDG down on the bottom side of the map. Deft is currently 1,500 gold ahead of his counterpart in Uzi as Mata. Actually gonna get jumped on trying to face check a ward, a face check a brush, sorry, Mako takes a full Chaos Storm to the face there. Mata still getting chased down. Scout looking to try and find a snare. Parallel Convergence even coming down. EDG only able to force summoners out of the RNG lineup. A lot of expended right there. Importantly, though, that Xiaohu doesn't have mana and Uzi is forced to back right now. So not a ton of wave clear available for RNG in this mid lane. Yeah, the trade-off was they get damage, so they have pressure. They're going to need MLXG probably to use his ultimate if he wants to save it. Oh, I don't mind. Tarrant going to take a little bit of damage. By our wave clear combined. <laughs> yeah, Victor has lasers. <laughs> I forgot he's got <laughs> one upgrade. No, Shao is <laughs> looking at him like she, like, I bet that blue buff would be really handy right <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> absolutely. Speaking of blue buffs, you see the ultimate actually come out from him. Like she, they're trying to take away his own blue, but Def able to pick that one up with the help of Clear Love. I like this point. So RNG have reacted knowing that they can't put Uzi into the bottom lane, not until the wave pushed. And they put him mid. Edigi's response is to poke them out, trying to get vision near mid. So they were one step ahead, out thinking where RNG were going to be. And this time around, now that they're pushing in, you can see Mako and Death had already established that vision through the one skirmish. They can now pressure the turret and keep Uzi away from the farm. Well, it's a 30 CS advantage for both RNG's solo laners at the moment. A small advantage for Clear Love in the jungle, a 30 CS advantage for Deft. The, s the kills are 8-3. to three. And it's only a 1,500 gold lead for EDG right now. RNG still well and truly in this game. Man, even Clear Love, like posturing towards mid lane, he may be on a ward, but his presence is notable so he can rotate towards bottom. And these two are playing hyper aggressive, and I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot, Froskurin. I even put on a voice for that. <laughs> I like it. I was totally fine until <laughs> <laughs> eye contact. Froskurin has been. Uh, Tilted by the rusty voice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Death and Mako still positioning very aggressively down this bottom lane, looking to push it towards the bot lane in a turret. You see the Iceborne Gauntlet was completed by Defter. <laughs> Defter there giving Mako a little bit of attack speed boost. Stacking up his oh. passive nicely. That's lots of damage down towards Uzi. Two shot barrage is there. He's pretty much just waiting for the spell shield. Spell shield is down. There's a shield from Brom down as well. Perfect time for Death to try and throw that one out. They have a spot to the pink ward that's just behind them in the brush, but this turret, he's going to fall down in a second. Clips him. Well, goes through a lot of minions to do just that. Stops the recall. RNG are not reacting in the right way. They should be sending somebody else down here, but because they have a trundle as their top laner, they want to keep empowering Looper on that trundle. They don't want to put him into a position where he just gets poked out. And yes, uh... EDG's vision has expired right now, but the other big bonus for EDG is they had that entire blue side jungle lit up for the duration of that push. EDG are in full deft support mode. I can't wait to see the damage dealt graph. <laughs> I'm serious. Let's see if we get another 50% I really can't deft. wait. <laughs> That's his excited voice. He doesn't need to put one on for that. <laughs> for now, though, they've still got an RNG to face off against if they want to get towards that graph. RNG are just praying for the 5v5 and for mm -hmm. Looper to go big, so this is, uh, this is where we are. Sit back, farm, also get Uzi back to uh, a power point, and right now EDG yeah. pedal to the metal. EDG do have all their gold into death right now, or most of their gold, sorry, into death. If RNG can find a way to kill them, it might be good for them in these team fights. EDG have their eggs in one basket, RNG have their hand in many, because honestly they can still get to team fighting, the gold lead isn't a big deal. And this is where they've changed things up. So they break the second turret on the bottom lane. They decide that mid is now their focus. Whatever they decide to do, EDG, they're putting Deft as the centerpiece of it and trying to work around him. RNG, they need to get a team fight. They need to try and find something, a situation with which MLXG is there, Jahu is there, and Uzi doesn't have to be there. Which means that this dragon coming up in 23 seconds will be very telling to RNG's intentions. If they feel like they are strong enough to go for their 5v5 and prep for it, they do have two pink wards in their inventory right now. Or if they're just going to give this one away and look for a six minute window to continue to farm towards those item points. Speaking of which, Uzi has finally completed his first item, Essence Reaver on the board. It's five minutes, oh five minutes, five seconds until the second dragon is going to spawn here and immediately 
EDG looking to try and take this one down. Meanwhile, RNG actually focused on trying to take away the blue buff from EDG side of the map instead. So we talked about it was going to be telling. RNG decide that they're not strong enough right now. They're going to continue to wait this one out and make appropriate trades when mm -hmm. available. This comes back to the initial conversation about the drafting. Is that EDG have actually drafted themselves well in terms of a scaling composition. They've got a Rise Ezreal, who are both tier champions, and a Graves in the jungle. So the later the game goes, the better that they start to look in terms of damage output. Mm -hmm. Honestly, EDG get towards the Guardian Angel point of the game again, and they just start to explode the map open. Meanwhile, we see RNG taking away the Rift Herald in response to the Dragon being picked up by EDG. And they're still trying to hold on towards the mid lane in its uh, Alsa turret, as Xiaohu does have blue buff now. And this could have dashes over the wall. There we get to see that the next dragon to spawn will be a mountain dragon. Definitely one that these two teams would like to pick up. Very well timed, especially because it'll be a big, uh, big issue when everyone wants to siege. Kulov's cool still no. doing what he can to clear out this jungle. This is something cool <laughs> that uh, cheese Baron. <laughs> Def does, is... Naturally, the True Shot Barrage will give you vision as it passes through. Deft has been using the True Shot Barrage very much like Ash's Hawk Shot in a <laughs> lot of his LPL games. Blue buff, gonna get smited away by Amalek Chi. Not just in the Baron cases, but he'll often throw it, especially when they're sieging in mid lane and EDG don't have the necessary flanking wards, he'll throw it off to the side just to check. I think it was either you or Spawn that also pointed out that he likes to go into Fog of War to use it to get damage out. Oh, it was me. Hmm. There we go. So, using that true shot barrage very nicely, showing why he is the tier list of people who are allowed to play Ezreal. He also actually being put down there. They're actually going to try and look to find Mako. The stun not going to come out from Braun, but it does get that knockout. They do get the pick on towards Mako. But that was a five-man gank squad coming out from RNG. And this is the thing. EDG actually uh, don't have that great of vision. It's been decent this series, but historically it's fairly weak, especially when you com uh, compare them across from Mata. Didn't have the flanking vision. Another fight. Xiaohu just gets obliterated as that fight starts there, forcing the flash coming out from Mata to get away. Paralok of just deep inside of RNG's territory. Mouse flashing over the wall, looking to try and find more people. Just uses his ultimate to get back in position for this fight. Lupa is going to get taken down. Mouse is dashing in and out of fights, left, right, and center. Mata. It's his next time. Going to be able to jump on top of him oh. if he gets that time winder. Can't quite slow down the Braun, but he's still looking for it. Paolo Convergence is going to go down. Slows Mata for just a second there. He's not going to be able to find that kill. But the big thing, though, is that they will get this outer mid tower. So EDG getting what they came for. And likewise, the, uh, the vision was an issue when the flank came up for RNG and they managed to get a pick. But when everyone can see everyone and they're in the middle of the lane, EDG come out on top. That's funny because that's exactly what RNG did. All of their vision is defensive, but Mako was just far too forward. MLXG twice in a row now has actually gifted kills on the back of his explosive cask and knocks somebody towards the rest of his team. It feels like he's very one-track minded on keeping Uzi alive. It has to go back to this idea that if you have an all-star ED carry and you're a carry-oriented jungler, mm -hmm. Kindred. Kindred was available. Kindred did see some nerfs coming to 6.1, so could potentially be why the teams have strayed away from the champion. 6.11, sorry. 6.11. 6.1. I got your fish. The new patch that we're currently on. Yeah. Well, that so one. You calm down over there. Drop. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, you can see EDG grouping up towards the mid lane here. Mouse and Cleanup pushing out the waves. They've actually sent Rise down to the bottom side of the map. And Deft and Mako moving up towards the top side. Yeah, so that's important. They're trying to take free goal, get actual advantages. And the money between these two teams is not high. We've already spoken to the fact that it's mostly just Deft, but now Mouse is starting to come into his own right as quite a powerful top laner with his two completed items. Which is an issue because not only is he a threat to Uzi, but more importantly, he's a threat to Xiaohu. Very immobile mage, having Echo jump on your face. Yeah, and Looper can't always split pushes effectively when he's against somebody who is bigger than him. Plus, this is a thing, apparently, and... He can fight him. Looper is trying to take down Scout here. Scout popping his spells there, getting his passive up on the line, but MLX G is down here as well. He's trying to dodge out all the spells possible, but that's just <laughs> too much damage that comes out. He had some quick feet, but it's not enough to avoid all of that. I like the victory cask right there. Just throws the Gatorade down. We got one, boys. <laughs> In response, EDG take top. Yeah, but all of this time, exactly. Whilst they dove the turret, they didn't have minions to help them continue to push a turret afterwards. Uzi's stuck in this middle, and EDG as a team still feel one step ahead of RNG at every time. 
And there's still 4,000 gold ahead of our RNG lineup as well. Def doing what he can up in the top lane now, trying to push it towards the top lane in the turret. You take a look at his items really quickly. Completed his Mana Mune, as well as the Iceborne Gauntlet, now looking towards his last Whisper component. Also has a Hex Drinker on top of that. So that's a very farmed up Ezreal. Yeah, in short, he's real strong. <laughs> uh, on the other side, Uzi is just on Struggle Street right now. Has the Essence Reaver finally completed the Static Shiv. I like the fact that he's going towards the Shiv. Uh, to help stall out with the wave clear for his team because RNG know we just need to buy time, get to these item breakpoints, and look for that big 5v5. And you know, funnily enough, whilst the bottom turret fell down, it was Scout trying to 1v1 Looper and something that we should not continue to see, but Mouse didn't have his teleport. So the reason they did that is they put him mid lane so he can rotate to where they want to push. And Indy G are happy to consolidate poor situations by trying to get global gold for their team. It looks like they're focusing very heavily on these neutral objectives and turrets that they can take down. Another true shot barrage comes out from death there, just to kind of get a little bit of vision and find out where the rest of RNG are. This Mouser Dragon is going to spawn here, and EDG looking to try to take down their third dragon of the game, furthering their advantage here over RNG. And actually, no, he would like to steal this one. going to be a very tough task for him to do. And this is timed perfectly. Again, this is when both teams are wanting to siege Whoa. up EDG in particular. Oh. Zemlek, she does manage to slip his blue away. Takes away Looper, actually trying to teleport out of there. Gets snared down by the Rise Scout. Wants to try and get a revenge kill here. Subjugate comes out to heal up this trundle. There's the ultimate from Nami. Good flash coming out from Looper. Puts down a pillar as well to stop there. Push coming out on towards the trundle. And in response, RNG get the superior positioning on mid tower. They will be able to get one, but not much more. You've got to give them credit where it's due for even getting the turret, however. A little bit of overaggression looking for Looper, but not everybody on the same page from EDG means that he kind of can just flash and walk it out. And that's still a net win for RNG in the way of gold, but with three drakes in the back pocket of EDG and the ever-looming Elder could present some issues for RNG. Well, there's still EDG... Still 2,000 to 3,000 gold here ahead of RNG. But RNG definitely trying to get back into this game wherever they possibly can. You can see Uzi, he's picked up his Essence Reaver and his Static Shiv here. So one more item and he would be at the three-item uh, three power spike that we normally see Sivers approach. And once we're seeing these teams try to get towards where they can fight again, RNG have to be as five. I don't think there are many situations where they can be anything other than four or five as a group and win something on the board. Trundle can split push. That's the only other avenue that they have. EDG have the opportunity to 1-3-1 one, one with Scout once he finishes that Void stuff. Mouse is huge and no one can deal with him. If they send Xiaohu, he doesn't have Teleport. EDG have opportunities. I'd say maybe one more than that of RNG. RNG look like they want to try and start a fight here. It's Mato going to get caught out by the EDG lineup. Mako takes a lot of damage from this. Chaos Storm now going to be put on top of Scout and cleared up. But Looper is the one that gets locked down as Mouse looking to try and wreak havoc in the back lines. Jumps on top of the Trundle. Now looking towards Xiaohu as well. He gets taken out. MLG flashes Whoa. forward. Doesn't get the body slam, but a good ultimate knocks Death back in towards the team. Uzi is trying to guide, but the final missing shot takes him down. It's an ace coming out from EDG. And it's too little too late. EDG find the proactive play. They find the picks, and they just steamroll over RNG. MLG not in position for the start of that fight at all. Yeah, we spoke to the Void stuff, and there it is, honestly. The amount of damage the Scout was doing with the rest of the team is unreasonable. This is the Death show as well as Mouse playing his part. They just blow up Looper, and it just comes down to mechanical execution. Mouse, right place, right time. And all of the low health bars in the world from these ricochets, and Uzi did his job. He just doesn't have a front line to sustain through the damage that EDG have on the flip side. Uzi just gets obliterated. And this means that EDG will walk away with the team fight as well as the Baron in complete control of the game. And now they're about 6,000 gold ahead of RNG as well, with this Baron buff, it's just going to get bigger and bigger as it looks towards taking him out more objectives on RNG's side of the map. You can already see what that has bought for the team as well. Ezreal, one item away from six, does have the mortal reminder, the more of Mount Mortis as well being picked up now. And this just is a perfect microcosm of EDG so far. You changed out the solo laners, but the heart and soul remains of this team. And it's Deft, Clear Love, and Mako. Deft in particular, 6 0 and 7. <laughs> so massive on this Ezreal. Pulls it out in game three. No. You see that you're looking to try and siege the middle lane inhibitor turret. They actually have Mouse Split pushing up on the top side of the map against the Trundle.
trying to take down the top lane in a turret parallel. Converge is coming down, trying to lock down Looper. He's going to get stunned up. Here's Clue Love up on the top side. Puts some good damage down towards the channel. Good shield from Mata. Stops the ultimate oh, coming from Mako. He's being knocked into the team. Chaos Stone goes down. They find a pick on towards the support. The top lane in a turret will still fall down in return for EDG. Better cask that time around from MLXG. Needs to be a bit more consistent on them and open up picks like that for his team if they want to get a foot back in this. And the problem is the casks have been great. They've just been too late. He's never actually been there, but now they're confined to their own base. He doesn't have much of a choice. And it's good to see those plays now working out for them. It is only the support dead from EDG. They still get a turret for it. Mm -hmm. and their gold lead, of course, stretches a tiny bit in their favor. All things considered, we are still seeing the bite back of what this RNG team can do when they're actually as a team. On top of that, Dragon's going to be respawning in a minute 30. So if EDG can take control of the pit, they'll be able to take down the final Elemental Dragon of the game, which is unfortunately going to be an Air Dragon, but still four Dragon buffs that can be empowered by an Elder Dragon if they decide to take it down later on in the match. Which means that RNG need to step up and fight them here. Need to start moving into that area, laying down their vision control, and hopefully op open up another pick like that from MLXG. I wouldn't fight this Drake. I don't think it's worth it. They've got other problems. Xiaohu actually taking a lot of damage from Mouse here. He goes into his parallel convergence just to get the shield there. We'll get stunned up by the gravity field, but he's just wreaking havoc on the bottom side of the map right now. Yeah, definitely. He's got a lot of presence at the moment. He's starting to cause a lot of issues, but they've got the one three one absolutely going with those two teleports available. Teleport actually coming in towards the bottom side of the map from Scout, who was up in the top lane for that one three one. The inhibitor is going to fall down. The rest of it is he now collapsing towards the middle inhibitor turret. Dev takes it up a little bit, going to get some good damage down on towards this turret. RNG looking to try and defend this one. It's going to be difficult for them, though. Mouse does have a flank here if he wants to try and jump into the back lines of RNG. Mouse is just feeding the creep wave onto the Nexus turret. He's got the Baron of Minions doing some work. Two cannon minions just slowly chipping away at these turrets. Xiaohu trying to do what he can to stop them from poking down the Nexus turrets. Uzi does get a good boomerang blade out to stop that as well. But this middle lane inhibitor turret, that's going to fall with just a couple more auto attacks from Deft. And yeah, look at Mouse's presence on a flank as well. There's the Parallel Convergence going down. Mouse was looking to try and find that one. Good ultimate from Nami going to knock them up, but no engage coming out for EDG just yet. MLXG <laughs> looking for <laughs> this extra Mako. Deja Vu was just plain sight for him right there as he flashes away, trying to avoid the pick coming out. MLXG smartly holds the ultimate though. <laughs> that his, was respectful. Yeah, his life flashed before his eyes as the body <laughs> slam was used, but MLXG was not actually looking for it. It is a sign of respect from Mako. It doesn't mean that anything further will be pushed, except the free objectives taken. Air Dragon's going to get taken down by EDG, and they will be happy with the single inhibitor they took down in the bottom lane as well as their current 8,000 gold advantage ahead of EDG. Ahead of RNG, sorry. Colorblind. I thought that was the Elder Drake. <laughs> that was like, they're just going to give that away. That's it's a very small Elder Drake. <laughs> the next one's the Elder Dory. Okay. Fills up that when I saw bit. it was the cloud, I was like, oh, this makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, no. Death, though, meanwhile, he's got the Bilgewater Cutlass complete here, sir. Looking for his final item, being the Blade of the Ruined King. And the GAs being the GG point that we alluded towards earlier in this game have been met by EDG, and with an inhibitor broken, they basically can just wait for the next Baron. Mm -hmm. and look towards that as their point that they fight at. Take Credit where it's due, though, to Uzi. Mako actually getting a lockdown. He blew his flash earlier from the previous engagement. Teleport actually coming in there to try and find a flank to RNG. Gets cancelled at the last second from Scout, or from Mouse. That's true shot around. She comes out just to clip Xiaohu there. Find a pick, still 1 minute 43 to Baron. They're now looking they for a fight. flank. Aren't you want to try and take this one? 5 on 4. Good flash forward from Mata. Good body slam as well coming out. But Deft, he's already in the back lines. Doing some good damage to Shao and Uzi. Clear up. He's able to take down Mata. Emily, puts down the ultimate. Death. And flash forward for Deft. He goes for it. He finds the kill. Shao Hu. It's going to get taken down by that oh final God. Mystic shot. Looper now getting jumped on by Deft. Goes for the 1 on 1. Takes him down as well. And that's another race coming out from EDG. And this should be game. Deft was left untouched on the side on his Ezreal. Yes, the exhaust came, but it was far too late. He ripped through the side of RNG, and EDG will retain the most dominant position in the LPL. I want another fantastic performance from the EDG lineup. Off the back of their bottom lane there, able to overcome the deficit from their solo laners. They pick up the win over RNG in the first cross-conference game of this week in the LPL.
the victory fountain dive. And you can see the joy on their faces. Mouse there on the farthest left of your screen is just ecstatic as he picks up the final hit on the Nexus. A sub top laner just beat Looper. You'd be very happy with a result like this if you were EDG's players. RNG, on the other hand, they have a lot of questions to Ooh. ask because that game wasn't even lost through their jungle pick. It actually was lost through Uzi and Mata in a 2v2 bottom lane. And I think it's safe to say at this point that we know who the best bottom lane is in the LPL at the very least. That guy is the best AD carry in the world. There is no dispute. That was disgusting. I agree. Death to Mako just looked fantastic time and time again. Great performance for them in the games they played here against RNG. EDG are ultimately going to be the victors here for Group A in the first cost conference game. But EDG, they miss out on summer 2015, spring 2016, MSI, and then they come back in, in 